I've been around the tech world long enough to remember the days when my first MacBook was more of a hassle than a help. It was this big, bulky thing that took forever to start up, and honestly, it felt like I was always waiting for it to catch up to me. But somehow, I stuck with it. I thought I knew exactly what Apple was all about. After all, I had been using Macs for years. Little did I know I hadn't seen anything yet. If you'd asked me a few years ago whether I'd choose a Mac or a Windows PC, I'd have answered without a second thought, Windows. Back then, Macs just weren't cutting it for me. They were slow, buggy, and when I needed them to actually work, they often just couldn't keep up. Sure, they were fine for the basic stuff, emails, browsing, and the occasional Word document, but anything beyond that, forget it. I was convinced that for anyone who needed serious power, a Windows PC was the way to go. But then, something changed, and let me tell you, it was a game changer. We are incredibly excited to announce our first step in this transition, with our first chip designed specifically for the Mac. And we call it M1. Fast forward to today, and I couldn't be more excited to talk about Apple's first ever chip made just for the Mac, the M1. Switching to it felt like upgrading from a bicycle to a Lamborghini. The difference was that huge. Suddenly, everything just worked. No noise, no heat, just smooth, effortless performance. But the M1 wasn't just faster, it was smarter. For the first time in years, using a Mac didn't feel like a trade-off. It felt like stepping into the future. And trust me, it was an absolute game changer. So why is the M1 chip so special? Well, here's the breakdown. They ramped down production on M2 chips because they weren't selling quite as good. And I think it's really obvious why, because M1 was just insane. In traditional computers, especially PCs, you have multiple components working together to make everything run smoothly. Your graphics card, your cooling system, your motherboard, and your CPU. These are all separate parts working in unison. But the M1 chip, that's it. It's one chip, one beautifully designed piece of silicon that combines the CPU, GPU, and even more, all in one. And when you combine all of these components into one chip, you get something extraordinarily efficient. The M1 chip performs at the highest level without using much power, and it's capable of producing the same level of performance as a traditional computer with separate components. This new approach isn't just a minor improvement. It's a complete overhaul of how we think about computing. For years, I had watched Apple struggle with their computers. My Intel Mac was powerful, but it was also loud, hot, and constantly ran into performance issues. If you tried to use your Mac for anything demanding, it felt like it was about to take off, and not in a good way. It was loud, it got hot, and frankly, it just wasn't a pleasant experience. And with the Intel Macs, I found myself compromising. I felt like for the price I was paying, I could have had a Windows PC that worked better and was quieter and cooler. But then came the M1 chip. Suddenly, everything changed. No more fan noise, no more heat. The M1 chip handled everything I threw at it, effortlessly. It was a total transformation, and I wasn't even sure if I believed it at first. But the more I used it, the more it became clear. Apple had finally nailed it. When Apple decided to ramp down production on the M2 chips because they weren't selling as well, it wasn't a surprise to me. It was clear that M1 was unbeatable. It was clear that the M1 had completely redefined what a computer could be. In a traditional PC, you have a graphics card, cooling systems, a motherboard, and a CPU, all separate components working together, each doing its own job. But with the M1 chip, everything is integrated into one chip. There's no bulky cooling system, no power-hungry components, just a beautifully engineered piece of silicon that handles all the heavy lifting. And the beauty of this design is that it's not only more efficient, but it produces more power while using less energy. That's a huge deal especially when you consider how much power modern devices use. Less power equals longer battery life, lower heat, and ultimately, a much more pleasant user experience. For years, Apple had struggled with their computers. My Intel Mac was powerful, but it was also loud, hot, and constantly left me wondering if I should just switch to Windows. After all, for the same price, I could have had a machine that didn't make my desk feel like it was on fire. With the Intel Mac, I was essentially compromising on performance and quality, which is something that always left me frustrated. But then, the M1 chip came into the picture. Suddenly, all the things that were wrong with Intel Macs were solved, and everything just clicked. No more heat, no more noise, no more frustration. Everything just worked, as it should. The M1 wasn't just faster, it was a total revolution in how I experienced computing, and I wasn't the only one who felt this. The tech world at large was shocked by the performance of the M1. 
This was it. Apple had created something special, and for the first time in years it felt like Apple was ahead of the curve. When the M1 shocked the tech world in 2020, many people assumed it was a fluke, a one-time leap that competitors would quickly match. Well, here we are in 2025, and with the M4 series out, nothing has changed. The gap hasn't closed, in fact it's grown into a chasm. A MacBook Pro with an M4 Max isn't just competing with other laptops anymore, it's going head-to-head -head with desktop workstations that draw five times more power. Imagine that. These laptops, running on minimal power, are outperforming the big boys. And here's the kicker. In a recent video test, the M1 running Windows as a virtual machine actually outperformed a high-end $4,000 Razer laptop with an RTX 490 GPU. This Mac running Windows in a virtual environment that usually cuts performance by half completely obliterated the competition. That was an eye-opener. Apple had cracked the code and the M1 was a game-changer. Let's take a trip back to 2005. Apple was in deep trouble. Their PowerPC chips were underperforming and they were being outpaced by Intel in almost every area. Apple needed a savior and they found one in their oldest rival Intel. Steve Jobs took the stage at WWDC 2005 and what happened next sent shockwaves through the tech world. We are gonna begin the transition from the PowerPC to Intel processors and we are gonna begin it for you now and for our customers next year. The very company that Jobs had mocked for years was now about to become Apple's closest partner. After the Intel transition, things started to change. Macs started to run beautifully. You could even run Windows on a Mac, and it was faster than ever. The MacBook Air revolutionized laptop design, and Apple was selling more Macs than ever before. But even during this period of success, there was a catch. Intel's processors were hot, really hot. You'd touch the Mac and burn your hands. They needed elaborate cooling systems just to function, and even then, they weren't great under heavy loads. Apple's system was compromised, and they needed something better. In 2019, Intel had become Apple's biggest limitation. The same company that had saved Apple in 2005 couldn't build a MacBook that could handle basic video editing without overheating. Apple was at a crossroads, and they had to make a decision. Continue with Intel and face the same problems, or build their own chip. The answer was clear they decided to go in-house and build the M1 chip. The M1 revolution didn't start in 2020. It started much earlier, back in 2007, when Intel had the chance to make the chips for Apple's new device, the iPhone, but they passed. Intel thought mobile phones were a dead-end market. Apple, without a partner, decided to do something completely unprecedented. They designed their own chips. In 2008, Apple acquired PA Semi, a small chip company, for $278 million. It might have seemed like a small deal at the time, but it was the beginning of Apple's chip empire. By 2013, Apple's A-series processors were outperforming Intel's mobile chips. By 2018, Apple's chips were matching Intel's laptop processors, while Intel was still trying to break into the mobile market. The writing was on the wall. Apple had already won. By the time Apple released the M1, it was clear they had completely changed the game. The M1 wasn't just a new chip, it was a revolution in how we think about computers. And we built what we call the unified memory architecture that is scalable across product. You start with the iPhone, but then we scaled it to the iPad, and then to the watch, and eventually to the Mac. The unified memory architecture meant that the CPU, GPU, and memory all worked together seamlessly. This allowed for instantaneous data transfer between components, eliminating bottlenecks, and making the system incredibly fast. The first M1 Max chips blew everything out of the water. Developers saw compile times cut in half, photographers could edit huge files with zero lag, and video editors were able to work for hours without hearing a fan spin up. For the first time in history, Apple had a chip that was cooler, quieter, and more powerful than anything Intel had made. It wasn't just about raw power, it was about efficiency. The MacBook Air, an entry-level model, was outperforming $6,000 Intel MacBook Pros. This was the moment when Apple proved that their chip wasn't just a gimmick, it was the future of computing. And as of today, five years after the M1, that same chip is still running strong. It handles 4K video editing, multiple streams, and complex tasks with ease. It's no wonder people don't want to upgrade. They're still getting insane performance with the M1. The M1 chip didn't just make waves, it sent shockwaves through the industry. Intel's market value has taken a hit, and even giants like Qualcomm and Microsoft can't ignore the shift. 
This isn't just another processor, it's a game changer. The impact on computing is massive and this is only the beginning. The future of computers. Apple is leading the way.